an important way that fungi can be classified is based on their structure or shape, and that is just the morphological classification. Now, there are four main classifications that can uh, arise from this, where we can have molds, yeasts, yeast-like fungi, and dimorphic fungi. So we'll take time to look at each one of them and understand them a bit more. So molds, you know, we have typically heard of this name. Mold is what we, are, we regard to filament as fungi. And they are called filament as fungi because of the presence of a rope or thread-like structure that we actually call a, a hyphae. So if you look at these structures here, we have like some elongations, and these elongations are what we call hyphae. When we have so many of these hyphae together, entangled together, they're actually called mycelium. So when you look at a bread that has mold, what uh, you see at the top are basically the spores, but at the bottom or inside, you have these thread-like structures. So an example of a, of a mold or a fungi in this class is what you normally know as the common um, bread mold, what is called a spigelus, uh, a rhizopus uh, stolonifer, sorry, but we can also have a spigelus uh, nature, which basically causes a spigelosis. So another one that is in the same class is yeast. And yeast, uh, they are unicellular, as opposed to molds, molds which are multicellular. Yeast are unicellular, eukaryotic organisms. We know a typical um, um, fungal cell is eukaryotic in nature. So these ones are normally reproduced by budding, which is an example of an asexual reproduction, if they are put um, in, a, in, a, in a medium, basically where they have nutrients. A classical example of this is uh, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is what commonly people know as baker's yeast or brewer's yeast. So the other one is yeast like fungi, and yeast like fungi, this partly resembles uh, yeast because of the circular kind of structure or oval-like structure. However, they, are, they also have sort of like a filament or a hyphae kind of structure. And this kind of hyphae, they are actually called pseudo hyphae or like false hyphae because they are not typically the, the, the normal hyphae that we have. So that's why they actually get the name yeast like fungi because their structure is not fully like a yeast because there is a pseudo hyphae there. A classical example of this uh, of a fungi under this class is Candida albicans that causes candidiasis. Finally, we have dimorphic fungi, and basically it's called dimorphic because it exhibits two forms of growth, so either as a mold form or a yeast form, and it actually keeps switching in between depending on the temperature or carbon dioxide uh, levels. However, temperature is the most common determinant, and at 25 degrees when it's a bit cold, they grow like mold, and when it's a bit hot, like at around 37, they grow like yeast. So they are mainly pathogenic because they, are, they have the ability to exist in both environments. An, an example here is histoplasma capsula, which causes histoplasmosis. Okay, so those are the four classes that we have.